I'm Todd Clippinger, and welcome to the American Craftsman Workshop. Today, I have a very special guest uh, coming to us on Skype. His name is Eric Gorges, and Eric is the host of a brand new TV series on PBS entitled A Craftsman's Legacy. A Craftsman's Legacy is part of the fall 2014 lineup, and it is just starting to hit the air. But before that uh, started, uh, I was given access to preview a couple of the episodes before they aired, and it is a great series, guys. Um, uh, American craftsmen are very near and dear to me because I make a living with my hands and I know a lot of craftsmen around me and I call on them. This series does a great job of capturing their stories and telling them and they're just sharing their love of the craft and showing them making a living with their hands. I love this series, but rather than me go on any more about it, let's cut away to Eric and have him tell us about it. Eric. Thanks for joining us here today on the American Craftsman Workshop. Um, uh, I've had an opportunity to view a couple of the episodes, and you got a really great program going on. And in your intro, you mentioned you do custom motorcycle building. And so I checked into it. You do some pretty sweet rides. But the question is, how do you go from custom motorcycle building to hosting a program about American Craftsmen? Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um... You know, craftsmanship, I grew up with it. it you know, my uh, my grandfather was a, a woodworker and uh, my dad was a hobbyist. And I, I just grew up with it all the time. Loved working with my hands and something I really appreciated. So it was really easy for me. Now the show, is that your show? How did it get started? Was that your idea? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, how, a- how long did it take to get that off the ground? Uh, quite some time. I mean, I, I've probably been working on it for four or five years and then, you know, just eventually started building the team and got a lot of other people involved with it. And, you know, this isn't something that that I could do by myself by any means. I, I do the easy part, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's all the other people that you don't see that really do all the hard work, you know? Yeah. You actually, the show, the show's a really nice production. You guys have done well with it. Um, and it's pretty clear. I mean, there's no way you could do that by yourself. Um, <laughs> what, uh, how big is your team that, uh, that, that does the production? That's a pretty good sized production team. Yeah. You know, we've got, yeah. We've got, you know, multiple camera guys and audio and, you know, yeah. And, and then you've got uh, directors and producers and all the other people that are on the road with you. And then there's a whole other, you know, huge team of people that are behind the scenes editing after that. Yeah. So, so um, one of the things I love about the show is the format where you go in and you do hands on with the uh, craftsman. Um, had you discussed doing it any other way or, or, or what? Because that that is a great format. I love the interaction that you have with the craftsman and the artist. Oh, thank you. Thanks. No, that was, you know, from day one, that was a very important part of the show because to me, it's the show really is it's to tell the stories of these craftsmen, right? And to give them an opportunity to, to share their life story with other people. But one of the bigger pictures is that we really hope to inspire other people to start working with their hands again a little bit and maybe think yeah. twice about craftsmanship and, and start to appreciate craftsmanship again. And so that was the point of having me work with them is because, yeah, I work with my hands every day and I'm a metal shaper um, by trade, but you know, I, I really don't have any, you know, uh, history working with uh, ceramics or, you know, with leather or glass or, you know, many things, you know, I don't, I don't do a lot of woodworking altogether all anymore. So to step in there really without a lot of knowledge and try to learn those things, that's really just to, to, you know, give other people an opportunity to see that you don't have to have all the knowledge in the world to do that. You just yeah. need to look at a interest and passion and and willingness to fail you know right and, and i do plenty of failing i'll tell you that much you know? <laughs> yes yes i <laughs> know that well too <laughs> you know uh the um uh the comment you made about being inspired it was funny because i i of course i'm a woodworker and i'm watching the first program which is a woodworker which i was i was uh I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I can't wait to see this guy. And then the, the other episode I saw was on the luthier. So oh, yeah. even that is something that I aspire to to try someday. 
because that's sort of one of those uh, sex segments of the woodworking that's sort of the pinnacle, you know, and uh, as to uh, to develop or, you know, to make uh, an instrument. But um, uh, I was inspired. And I mean, I do it. And I was inspired. I loved, Good. I loved hearing uh, John talk about passing it on. And, and uh, I mean, you can tell he's got, it is, it is just an intrinsic part of his, an inherent part of his personality. He loves the craft and he just wants to pass it on. And I, I got to tell you, I was so excited when you captured that with John and I don't I'm not sure that you would have got it had you interacted with him in another way either I mean it what came out was really uh the best that you could get I think and um okay. so you know kudos to you for that I really appreciate uh, the program that you did in that but yeah. um uh I think uh you know that this, this kind of leads me to one of the other things you know what is it is it is that basically the statement or the story you're trying to then just bring out is bringing the value of craftsmanship back or getting the public to understand how valuable it is or exactly, you know, what are the various things you're trying to get out of it? Because some things are fairly obvious, probably such as that. But uh, what can you tell us? You know, absolutely. That's a big part of it is to, to inspire other people. But we also want, you know, people to sort of discover craftsmanship again. You know, nowadays there's a big movement with um, handmade and handcrafted items and, and people are starting to get into it, which is fantastic. But we want to continue that and, and really help people discover true craftsmanship and, and then also, you know, help restore that value of craftsmanship again. You know, people right. forgot, I should say people have forgotten that, you know, our, our society and nation was built by craftsmen, basically. Yeah. And, a lot of people don't remember that. And, you know, at one time you were known for what you did in society. So, you know, you would have been Tom the, or Todd the woodworker. Yeah. Right. And I would have been Eric the metal shaper and there'd be, you know, Lorelei the blacksmith. And that's just how it was. And that's how you were known. Right. And that carried on through your generation and then, you know, uh, future generations. So. There's a lot there. Yeah. Do you think, uh, do you think craft, you know, is, is it evolving in the way that it, it, it transferred from one generation to the next, or is it dying, do you think? Or do you think it will always hang on? I think to some extent it will always hang on. I, I'd like to believe that. Um, I think also that, you know, there's a lot of kids out there that they're sort of lost. They, You know, nowadays it's like everybody expects you, you have to go to college. Yeah. Right. You got to go to college. You got to go to college. And honestly, I think there's a lot of people out there. College really isn't a good fit for them, mm -hmm. you know, and but they're not really given an opportunity to work with their hands at all to, you know, develop and nurture that and grow into it. You right. know, so. Yeah. yeah cause it, it used out. to be right. You know, like you comment in that first video too, just that, it, you know, was part of it used to be part of the education system, mm -hmm. at least at least woodworking and and um uh, and now it is, it no longer is. And, uh, so it's no longer as part of our formal education system in the U S and, uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it is actually, you know, and I, I, um, do you think that this show is going to end up putting you in a position where you're sort of a voice for the craftsmen, uh, in the U S that, you know, just, just by you presenting this to the public, you end up sort of being the face and the voice of, uh, do you, do you see that happening or, uh, uh, potentially I happening? I mean, it, now you, the show actually just started, so you probably yeah. haven't seen much influence off of it yet, but, uh, I kind of wondered about that. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I think it's way, way too early to say <laughs> that, but you know, I hope my personal hope is that, you know, maybe we touch a couple lives and yeah. I'd be really happy with that. If, if, you know, somewhere down the line, somebody says, hey, you know what, um, it, it really it made a significant impact on my life. Just one person. That'd be huge for us, you know, yeah. and, and me personally. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Do you, now, one of the things I thought about, too, was, uh, you know, you're you're from north of Detroit, uh, the area north of Detroit, uh, as, as I was doing my research. And you're um, 
you know, Detroit had to be one of the most hardest hit areas in the nation. And, and you, you must have been developing this kind of during the recession. Had, oh, yeah. had seeing people losing their jobs and considering the state of the American worker, did that influence the show much or your thoughts on it? Uh, you know, actually it did because, you know, Detroit is so resilient. And and they always say people from Detroit are tough. You know, we, yeah. we don't give up. We keep rebuilding, keep finding a way to, to make it, right? Yeah. And one of the things that a lot of people did in Detroit was sort of, you know, rebirth themselves into into something else. And and I think this is a great opportunity. It's never too late in life to learn something new and to try. Yeah. And, you know, specifically one person in our show, the 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 potter. He was a, a professional musician uh, up until his early 40s. He hadn't really touched ceramics at all. Huh. And now he's world renowned. Yeah. And I mean, this was somebody that just picked it up later in life. And, and to me, that's incredibly inspiring for so many people. Right. Right. That maybe they want to do something different with their life. And, you know, you don't always have to be a doctor or, or whatever you are. You know what I mean? A, yeah. You can always change and, and find something different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's you just, you made quite a change too. Can can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I, I uh, worked in, uh, you know, for a, a large corporation and, and I loved it. I, I really enjoyed what I did. I was in IT and, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. But yeah. um, I truly enjoy working with my hands and making things. And uh, I ran into some, you know, medical issues and decided that, uh, that this is what I wanted to do for a living. So I just did it, you know, yeah. uh, put in notice and found, uh, somebody to take me on as an apprentice to learn metal shaping and changed my life. Yeah. I think the intro on your show was great. I mean, because I connected with it, it just, uh, uh, talking about, uh, you know, it, it just was destroying you and you needed to do something that fed your soul. And what I do now feeds my soul. And I can tell by a lot of the woodworkers that contact me wanting to know about going into the field of woodworking, you know, can can they do it? And and so I think a lot of people are interested in making a change and working with their hands. There's the things that you describe and the things that, uh, you know, even your guests in your show talk about these people are seeking it. They're they're starting to crave it. So I think, I think your show is going to touch a lot of people. Um, did, now, you're done with the first season. It's already, it just started airing. Do you see the second season? Have you started it yet? Uh, we're, we're in uh, pre-planning right now or planning stages. So we're just starting to assemble our cast for season two. And, uh, you know, we're going to start shooting uh, first of the year. So Oh, okay. Yeah, I can Pretty see exciting. a lot of some of the intro, the intros, you know, the and the the cutaway shots were there was a lot of snow on the ground. So I figured oh, right. you are, yeah, you know, you're uh, uh, filming during the uh, winter months. Um, so what kind of things are, are you continuing with the same format? Uh, what kind of things can we expect to see in the second season? You know, I we're still really planning. I, I don't want to give away too much, but OK. Uh, the format's not really changing a whole lot. We're going to we're going to tweak it. Definitely. You know, I mean, sure. Um, I think season one for any show is always that that point of discovery. You know, it's 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 like anything else. Sure. You know, you sort of put something out there and you see how it is, and and then you adapt and make some changes and sort of tweak it. And uh, it's part of the maturing process. A- absolutely, you know. Yeah. And it, so we're going to keep tweaking this and and making it better and better and better. And um, as far as the craftsmen go and the and the cast, I, I think everybody. Pardon me. I think everybody's going to enjoy it, and uh, we're going to do some cool stuff next season. So. That's that's pretty awesome. So uh, now the show's just on PBS. How do we find the show? Is it just do, do the viewers just need to search their local uh, uh, TV listings um, for PBS, or is it is now is it specifically PBS or PBS Create, or does it end up airing on both? How does that work? Well, it 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 can yes. Um, uh, it's a it's a PBS uh, national show, um, distributed through American Public Television. So, oh, okay. Uh, the easiest way for people to, to find it is to go to our website, uh, 
craftsmanslegacy.com. Okay. And there's a, a search tool there. You can put in a zip code and uh, your state and city, and, and it'll tell you uh, when it's listing and what channel it's you know airing and all that stuff. We just started rolling out uh, within the last two weeks. So it's, it's constantly evolving. And every week there's new networks that are coming aboard and nice new stations. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I think, I think your, I think your show it's well produced. It covers something a lot of people are interested in. And it's, it's very interesting. You do well with your interviews. So, uh, I think you'll, I, I wish you good luck and I think you'll do well with it. Thank you so much. I, I really hope so. You know, uh, I think public television is is just a wonderful network, and and I truly, truly believe in it, and and really didn't go anywhere else. I mean, we wanted this oh, this nice. show on public television. Yeah, well, cool. Well, hey, I really appreciate you being with us today and talking about the program. It's it's always exciting to uh, uh, number one to to interview somebody that has a TV show, but also, I mean, I consider you a fellow craftsman. I've seen your work, and I hope you don't mind. I'll probably post a link. Uh, not only to uh, a craftsman's legacy, the program, but also to your to your website for your choppers, if you don't mind. Um, oh, please! You've got you you do some. I mean, some really artistic stuff. Uh, you take choppers to a whole new level. So well, thank you. Um, but I appreciate you being on the show today. And um, do you have anything else? No, I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Well, thanks for thanks for joining us. Well, I want to thank Eric for stopping by the American Craftsman Workshop and telling us about his new program, A Craftsman's Legacy. Guys, I hope you can catch this. I love the program. It's just starting uh, to roll out as part of the fall 2014 uh, lineup on PBS. Um, it may not be playing in your area yet. And um, as of this recording, I think one episode is, has just been aired. And uh, I was given access to preview a couple episodes um, in order to check it out. But um, it is a great program. Eric himself is a craftsman and an artist as he builds designs and builds custom choppers. And I think one of the great things is that he makes a good connection with these craftsmen and, and tells a great story and shares their love of the craft. I think that his program, A Craftsman's Legacy, is going to do well at uh, bringing renewed appreciation to what craftsmen do for putting a spotlight on them. And... Um, uh, really reigniting interest in craft. So I think you'll enjoy it. Be sure to check it out. I'll leave links to American Craftsman, uh, to a Craftsman's Legacy, and also to Voodoo Choppers, his site. And um, so that's really all I have for now. Until next time, be inspired and uh, stay safe in your own shop.